Welcome. Today we're going to cover the topic of economies of scale. Economies of scale is an economic theory that explains that the more firm produces, the lower the average costs per unit are. One of the key assumptions of this theory is the existence of a short-term and a long-term cost. The short term is defined by the period of time during which at least one factor of production is fixed. For example, we could have a limited number of workers, a limited number of machines, or a limited number of resources. During the short term, we observe that costs generally fall as we add more inputs in the production process. We should also observe that at some point, the costs start to rise. We're going to see this with an example. Suppose that the business buys a new machine to produce batteries. This machine costs 1,200 euros. The business then hires a worker. This worker produces 10 batteries during his 8-hour shift. As a result, the cost of the machine for one day is spread among 10 units of output. The cost per unit of output is, therefore, 120 euros. Now the business hires another worker for yet another 8 hours. The machine is our fixed factor of production. We assume that we can't easily change how many machines we have at any moment, but we can change how many workers we have. As we add another worker that produces yet another 10 units of output, this means that the average cost per unit of output has now fallen to 60 euros. If we add another worker for yet another 8 hours shift, we will produce 30 batteries and each of them will cost us 40 euros. This can be illustrated by the following cost curve the short run average total cost. It shows that the more we produce, the lower the average costs are. However, if we go back to our original factory and we add one more worker, we will have an issue. Since the machine can only be operated by one worker and the machine is now working 24 hours a day with three workers, an extra worker will not increase the output. Perhaps it may increase output if all workers spend six hours in the machine, as it may increase their productivity as they are more rested and happy, but this is an assumption. In addition, as we add more and more workers, eventually it will come to a point where none of them will be able to work well, as everyone will be on the way of someone else and the process will be very inefficient. As workers are also getting a salary, but output does not rise or even decrease, the more workers we hire, the means that after our third worker, the average total costs will start increasing. This is illustrated by this diagram, showing that the more we produce, the higher our costs of production are. Now, if we combine our previous diagram of falling costs with this new diagram, we can see that there is an optimal level of output that minimizes a company's average total cost in the short run. However, this does not yet explain economies of scale. Remember, economies of scale occur in the long run when we can change all our factors of production. The theory says that, apart from distributing our costs among a larger number of units in the short run, there are some intrinsic benefits from becoming a larger company in the long run. These benefits are purchasing economies of scale. For example, Suppliers often give discounts for large orders, so that the cost per unit bought from the supplier is lower than for smaller competitors. One real example of this are the planes sold by Airbus. Large orders of planes receive a discount by the manufacturer, so much so that the final price is a top secret. Managerial economies of scale. When people specialize into doing a task, they become more productive. A sole trader that has to do the accounting, marketing, and operations of a company will likely be less effective than having an employee working at 100% as an accountant, a marketing specialist, or an operations manager. Technical economies. Some machines simply become more efficient the larger they are. For example, to an extent, the larger an oil tanker is, the cheaper it is to transport one barrel of oil among other things, because regardless of the size of the tanker, you only need one captain. In the visibilities of capital equipment, which occurs because some machines are only available in large sizes. Small companies may not need to use a large machine continuously, but they will have to pay for it regardless. This is, for instance, what occurs with large farming equipment. In Western Europe, where farms tend to be smaller, 
Farmers often form cooperatives to purchase this kind of equipment to share it between farmers. Financial economies. Large companies often get loans at lower rates. If we go back to our original factory, let's see what happens. Suppose that the company buys a larger machine, and this time it costs 2,400 euros compared to the original 1,200. However, now a worker can produce 30 batteries per shift rather than the original 10 units because the machine is faster. Now the cost will be equal to 80 euros per unit rather than the original 120 euros. Although the cost of the machine has gone up, as it is relatively more efficient than this increase in total cost, the average cost per unit has fallen. What's happening here is the following. As we increase our output in the short run to take advantage of increasing returns to scale, our costs fall in the short run. However, in the long run, as those previously described benefits of becoming larger kick in, this means that for the same level of output, our costs should be falling. If we follow this logic over and over again, we can form a long-run average total cost curve that describes the change in costs in the long run and how they fall as we become larger. This is the theory of economies of scale. But similar to our short-run average total cost diagram, empirically, it has been shown that eventually larger doesn't mean cheaper. Eventually, there are reasons why costs start increasing as we produce more. We refer to this as diseconomies of scale. Diseconomies of scale may occur for a number of reasons, namely because there, are, there is a limit as to how large a machine can get. For example, oil tankers still need to navigate relatively shallow waters when they enter and exit ports. They may also occur because it may become very difficult for a company to organize an increasingly larger workforce. This is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like or subscribe and leave a comment.